Here's a problem where we've got a car traveling in a few different directions. It's going west, it's going southwest at one point. Uh, for problems like this, usually the very first thing you want to do is draw a diagram because it makes it a lot easier to visualize it. And fortunately for us, one of the steps in the problem is draw a diagram. So we can kill a few birds with one stone here and answer part of the problem by using our process to answer it. So first, let's uh, show our little origin point here. So this will be the x-axis and the y-axis. And the first part of the motion is that the car is traveling uh, 225 kilometers west. This is going to be an arrow. I'm going to draw that as a vector arrow pointing to the west. So I'm going to call that its displacement west. And then after that, then it's going to travel 45 degrees southwest for a shorter distance, 98. So I'm going to draw that as a vector at 45 degrees from the horizontal. This diagram doesn't have to be perfect, uh, but I'm just estimating here. But that's pretty close to about 45 degrees, I think. I'm going to call this displacement uh, D sub SW for southwest. Now the problem is asking us for the car's total displ displacement from the point of origin. So it wants this resultant vector here, which I drew very sloppily here. Let me try that again uh, a little better. But the idea is we want to find the distance of this total displacement right here, the resultant vector. And it wants magnitude and direction. So it wants the length of this third arrow drawn here. And it also mentions it wants a direction, which usually means they want an, an angle theta from the horizontal. So let's start by finding out the magnitude of d sub r. And usually one of the easier ways to do that is to take the x and y, the horizontal and vertical components of the car's motion. So the so so for example, part of the car's motion is westward. Obviously it moves west for quite a while, but even when it's traveling southwest, there's still a westward component here to, to deal with. So let's let's account for that. I'll say that for the car's western motion, it is first traveling 225 kilometers. Then it travels some extra distance west while it's going through this 45 degree angle motion. So we'll want to use some trigonometry for this. Specifically, this right here, this direction, this uh, direction that I'm outlining, that's the distance we want to account for. And then this is the 45 degree angle. So if we use some trigonometry, then we'd know that the cosine of this 45 degree angle is equal to, and cosine is equal to, adjacent over hypotenuse. So that means that this distance, this distance that I've boldened right here, that's the adjacent. And then of course the hypotenuse is this 98 kilometers. So if we're just solving for the horizontal one here, which I've labeled as x and the vertical one as y, then we could write that as 98 kilometers times the cosine of 45 degrees. And both of these bits here both account for the car's complete westward motion. And if we add them up, then that gives us a total of 294.3 kilometers. Now that does not mean that the car has traveled a total of 294.3 kilometers. This is just specifically the westward component of the car's motion. So now we'll want to do the same thing for south. Now the car is not traveling south at all during this first stretch of the motion where it's only going west. So we only need to worry about this part right here, this little 45 degree angle bit. But since we're looking, we're looking at the vertical part, the y part now, we'll have to use the other um, trig identity, the, 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 the other trig function, sine. So instead we've got 98 kilometers times the sine of 45 degrees. And that's what's relevant here, which if we uh, put that into our calculator, we find is 69.3 kilometers. Very nice.
So we found the car's total motion in the westward and southward directions. And the reason why this is relevant, the reason why this is useful to us, is because now that we have the components of the car's motion in two perpendicular directions, and that means that the resultant, this, again, like the hypotenuse-like thing here, can be treated like a right triangle, which means that we can apply Pythagorean's theorem. So the magnitude of d sub r can be seen as the square root of the sum of the squares of these two numbers. So if we put into our calculator the square root of 294.3 squared plus 69.3 squared, then we find 302 kilometers. And that is the magnitude of d sub r. But we still want the direction, so we'll need to find the angle theta too. Once again, we'll have to do this using trigonometry. Now we've got, uh, we now used the cosine and the sine functions to find the individual components, but to find the angle, usually we'll want to use the tangent function. Because remember, the tangent of theta is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side, which in this case, the opposite side is the, the y component, the southward component of the car's motion, and the adjacent side is the westward component of the car's motion. And we have both of those components, so all we need to do to find theta is, ta is, is solve for theta by taking the inverse tangent of the opposite side over the adjacent. The inverse tangent of the, of the, the south component over the, east, or the, the west component. So for us, that means taking the inverse tangent of 69.3 over 294.3. And if you put that into our calculator, we find an angle of 13 degrees. And then usually when we're writing out the answer, we'll want to uh, communicate um, like what, what that means. So you'll want to write like 13 degrees uh, south from west or something along those lines. And then that is the answer that you'd want to write down. And that is the answer to this problem. I hope this video helped you out. If there are any questions you have, please feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll try to help you. Um, if you have any requests for future videos, again, leave a comment or if you've got a Discord server that you could join where I try to encourage uh, discussion on these types of problems uh, or, again, a place for to, you want to talk about other things, about other scientific concepts. But that's all for today and I hope you have a lovely day.